For the last couple of years, we've, we've experienced a lot of historical events, haven't we? Everything from invasions in Europe, labor and supply chain shortages across the globe, skyrocketing gas prices, not to, not to mention the latest tragedy in Texas. But one of the things that has had a major impact on all of our lives, lives has been the global pandemic that started in 2020 and is finally starting to recede now over two, two years later. COVID has made all of us much more aware and worried about the spread of disease and the, the things that can happen whenever something like that breaks out. It's forced us to look at our lives a little bit differently and change some of our habits. And it was during the, the height of this pandemic when churches were closed down and millions of people were getting sick and quarantined to their homes or hospitalized that I was reading through Mark 1, and a story stood out to me in a way that it, it never really had before. And God used that to speak to me and help me understand it in a, a little bit different way. And that story is what I want to share with you today. So turn with me to Mark 139, and let's look at a time when, when Jesus was confronted with disease and how he had reacted to it. He went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Then a man with leprosy came to him and on his knees begged him, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he told him, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Then he sternly warned him and sent him away at once, telling him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer what Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet he went out and began to proclaim it widely and spread the news, with the result that Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but he was out in deserted places, and they came to him from everywhere. This is the word of the Lord. So for us to really understand the significance of the story, we need to understand the significance of this man's disease. Now, leprosy is not really something we worry about too much these days, but historically, it's one of the most feared diseases in the world. In medieval Europe, they, they set up leper colonies they would banish infected people to, and the native Hawaiians actually set apart an entire island for lepers so that they could be separated from their community. In first century Jewish culture, lepers had it pretty rough as well. Not only did they live with the sores that spread all over their body and led to deformity and a loss of feelings in their hands and their feet, they dealt with the suffering alone because they were kicked out of their community. COVID quarantine is pretty rough, but at least we can stay in our home or in a hospital. According to the law in Leviticus 13, lepers were ceremonial, uh, ceremonially unclean, which means they couldn't go anywhere near a clean person. So this man was forced to live outside the community. He had to wear torn rags for clothes and cover his mouth and announce to anyone who came too close, unclean, unclean, just so they wouldn't risk getting infected and being condemned like he is. Being unclean also means that he's unfit to be in the presence of God. He can't go anywhere near the synagogue to hear God's word being taught or to the temple and offer sacrifices to God. This poor suffering man, he, he knew loneliness like in a way that most of us would never understand. He was banished from his town, his family, in the very presence of God. It's no wonder that when he heard that there was a man named Jesus who had the power to cast out demons and heal the sick, this leper took a risk and broke the law of God by approaching him for help. Out of desperation, the leper walks to within arm's reach of Jesus and gets on his knees begging Christ just for help. The man fell face down in front of Jesus he didn't care how it looked. He had lost his dignity a long time ago. He knows that this is his only hope. This is the only hope he has to get out of the suffering and loneliness he's condemned to for the rest of his miserable life. He begs Jesus, if you're willing. The leper has no doubt what Jesus is capable of. He doesn't ask, Lord, can you make me clean? Is it possible? Do you have that power? And notice he's, he's not focusing on just relieving his pain. He's specifically asking about being cl uh, cleansed. Healing is a different word than what he's using. He doesn't just want his suffering to stop. He doesn't just want his earthly uh, torment to end. He wants to be able to return to his community with his family, with his neighbors, and be able to return to the worship of God. 
I've already said there's no known, there was no known way to treat this disease. If you got it, you couldn't do anything except for hope for a miracle, hope for some cure to just miraculously happen. The leper knew that his only hope was for Jesus to use his power to cleanse him. Charles Spurgeon suggests that the leper's request shows a lack of understanding, not, not of Jesus' power, but of his, of his heart, if you're willing. Spurgeon says, it is a pity this leper could go no further than to say to Jesus, if you're willing. But it's a great mercy he could go as far as that. If the leper knew Jesus' heart, he would have no question about Jesus' willingness. Jesus shows throughout his ministry that he has such love for those in need, and he desperately wants to help them. But this man doesn't necessarily know that. And when Jesus saw the leper begging on his knees, Mark says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Some use the word indignation. Now, indignation implies a certain level of, of irritation or even anger. So what, what would Jesus be angry about? Was it the man's lack of understanding and faith? Did Jesus really just not feel like healing today? Was he a little busy? Or maybe it was because he knew the man would ignore his instructions and go blabbing about his healing and make it hard for Jesus to get around later. I don't think it was any of those things. And I think both words, both translations are correct. I think Jesus was moved to indignation through his compassion. His heart broke right there on the spot of seeing this poor suffering man who's been cast out by his people, banned from the temple of God, and left to rot in the wilderness. I think Jesus was angered by being confronted by yet another human being, an image of God, tainted by sin and suffering, and he wanted nothing more than to wash that man clean. And that's exactly what he does. Jesus doesn't groan and tell the leper to, to back up a little bit because he's gross and he, he stinks. He reaches out and takes hold of his shoulder. And I can, I can just see the horrified looks on the disciples' face. What, what is he doing? Jesus, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That, man, that man's unclean. Look at him. You're going to get cursed just like he is. But Jesus doesn't worry about any of that. He reaches out and touches this broken man and looks him in the eye and tells him, I am willing. Be made clean. And right then and there, the man isn't just healed, he's cleansed. The sores begin to disappear. The shriveled hands stretch out and they're made strong again. The man's face lights up and he starts praising Jesus for his cleansing. And then Christ grabs him by the arm and certainly tells him, do me a favor, Keep your mouth shut about this. Get out of here and go offer the sacrifices required for your cleansing. They didn't tell him to make the sacrifices so he can officially be clean. Even though according to the law in Leviticus 14, that's how it's supposed to work. Your disease goes away, the priest comes and evaluates you, then you make some sacrifices, and then you're pronounced clean. But no, Jesus already declares, declares him clean whenever he, uh, he heals him. So, so why, why make the sacrifices? Jesus says the sacrifices aren't so the man is cleansed, but instead is a testimony to the priests. Jesus wanted his ministry to focus on the cleansing of souls and the forgiveness of sins, not just earthly healing. The sacrifices the man had to offer was to serve as a witness to the priests of Jesus' power over sin. See, for the Jews, disease, earthly disease like leprosy is seen to be a punishment for sin. You, you got... You got punished that way because you deserved it. You did something. Jesus' ability to make an unclean leper clean is a testament to his authority as the Son of God to not only wipe away the product of sin, but the very sin itself. But this man just couldn't help himself. He becomes one of the earliest evangelists. He goes into town and runs up to everyone he sees. You're not going to believe this. Ten minutes ago, I was a leper. But now, look at me, I'm clean. We don't even know for sure if he went and made the sacrifices he's supposed to. He just begins tell, telling everyone possible what happened to him and who it was that did it. So thanks to this big mouth, Jesus can't go anywhere near a city without drawing a crowd. He had to go out of his way to avoid big towns, and people would still flock to him out in the middle of nowhere. Later, when he makes his way back to Capernaum, the crowd was so massive, some guys had to cut a hole in the ceiling so their paralytic buddy could speak to Jesus and be healed, all because one man could not keep himself from telling everyone who he met what Jesus had done for him. Now, you might be saying, well, that, that's a cool story, but what, what does that have to do with me? See, every single one of us has a spiritual leprosy called sin. It covers our souls. It leaves us shriveled and numb. Sin casts us out of the presence of God. 
And every time he calls to us to come near, we have to cry out, unclean, unclean. We think we don't deserve to be in community with the Holy Creator because honestly we don't. Our diseased souls deserve, deserve to be banished and condemned away from the presence of God. But our relationship with God isn't about what we deserve. It's about God's will. Don't make the mistake of the leper and question God's willingness to help. Jesus came for the spiritual lepers. He came so that when we finally give up trying to cover up our sin and we can just run to him, fall on our faces, and ask him who has the power to take our sins away to cleanse us. Jesus came and died on a cross to take away the disease of sin and invite us back into the presence of God. All we have to do is go to him. Maybe you're like the leper, and even though you know God has the power, you can't quite convince yourself that God will just wipe your slate clean and forgive you. Maybe you think, look, you don't understand. I'm, I'm way too far gone. I've got such a severe case of sin. You've never seen anything like it before. Surely when God catches sight of me, he's going to either run away or he's going to try to drive me away by throwing stones at me I, just so I couldn't get my disease on him. But just like he didn't recoil away from the leper, Jesus isn't going to run from you. He didn't come to call the righteous. He came for the sinners. He came for the exact purpose of putting his hands on the diseased souls of the lost and taking their sins away. You can't scare him away. Or maybe you think that you need to do some self-improvement first. You've, you'll come to Christ once you've tried some home remedies. But I have to tell you, sin doesn't work like that. Sin is a cancer. It's got to be cut out and removed. And there's only one physician with the power to do that. So don't put off making an appointment with him and try to take care of it yourself because you can't. Matthew records the story of the leper directly after the Sermon on the Mount. I can just see him pacing back and forth at the base of the mountain talking to himself. Should I, should I go up there? Is there any chance that he would help me? Like, would Jesus take the time to help someone like me? And then he looks up and he sees Jesus walking down the mountain towards him. And he knows that this, this is the deciding moment. He can either listen to the voice in his head telling him to just back out, accept the suffering. Jesus has better things to do than help an unclean leper. Or he can put himself at the mercy of Christ and ask for cleansing that only he can give him. The leper chose to trust Christ, and it changed his life so much that he couldn't help but run his mouth and tell everyone who it is that saved him. And that same person can save you if you would just come to him. Lord, thank you for being willing to save unclean lepers like us. Even though we run from you, we rebel, and we, are, we cover our souls with sin, you stand there waiting to invite us back with forgiveness and make our soul clean. It is your power and your grace alone that can save us from sin. Give us the courage of the leper so that whenever we, we, we face trials in life, we know we can come to you and give them to you. Fill us with compassion and indignation at sin and suffering so that when we see those in need, we reach out to them and show them your love and mercy. And give us the joy of the leper so that we are so filled with the glory of your praise that we can't help but to share that with every person we meet and tell them what you've done for us through the cross. In the precious name of Christ, amen. So I want to invite you to put yourself in the shoes of the leper this morning. If you've never given your life to Christ and you're sick of the sin that's eating away at your soul, I invite you to come to the one who can take sin away. Christ came to save sinners through his suffering death on a cross. He knew what he was getting into, and he willingly gave his life for yours. Jesus is willing. Come lay your sin, sins at his feet. Maybe you've already given your faith to Christ, and you need to follow, to him, follow him in baptism or deal with another burden he's placed on your heart. There's going to be pastors here at the front who are here to guide you. If you're joining us online, text 94000 if the Spirit's prompting you to join the church or make some other commitment of faith. Whatever the Spirit has laid on your heart, the altar is open and Jesus is willing. 
Spurgeon said, if we cannot go as far as some do, we should go as far as we can. So go as far as you can this morning, and Jesus will meet you there.